My name is Patty Lekanoff Gregory. I'm from Unalaska, Alaska, and I was fortunate to learn the art of bentwood hat making from the late Andrew Grunholt. Andrew Grunholt is from Sandpoint, Alaska, and this was back in 1988 or 1989, the first time I started making these hats. The Aleutian Islands are very, when you think of it, it's big, it's, it's massive to you know, travel from the Alaska Peninsula to Attu, to the two islands over in Russia, to the other ends of the Aleutian Islands. I never left my community till, well I, I did when I was six years old but really don't recall any of it, but when I was 12 years old I left again. But I remember seeing the difference on Alaska, very mountainous, volcanoes, you know, very beautiful, except for they were minus trees. So, but you could see, no matter which way you looked, you could see, you know, there was not that interference of the trees. It's always windy, not always, but mostly. Um, a lot of rain, but not, you know, nothing that, you know, we get tired of it. Not very much snow, which is really good. You could see the snow on the mountains, you know, but again, a lot of wind. And um, it's just beautiful summertime when it's green, you know, you, you don't want to be anywhere else. And uh, if you get out of somewhere where it's not so windy, you know, the leeward side, you know, it's home. It grows on you. You know, the smell the flowers, the wind's blown from the west where we're at in Alaska. You smell the volcano. So it, it's just, it's really a nice feeling. You know, beautiful. The water, you could hear the water, the ocean. You could hear the surf. You could hear the rocks rolling from the surf. And then you hear the birds. And, you know, you hear the, you know, the wildlife. And every now and then if you listen, you know, you can hear, and it's a whale. You know, you're walking along the beach and, you know, beach combing, and all of a sudden here's this curious seal looking at you. And he's up there like, who's over there? And we're doing the same thing, like, who are you doing out there? And, you know, my dad always says, clap for them. And, you know, so we go like this, and their heads get taller out of the water. So it's really neat. And it, you know, it's, it's a quietness. And... Like I said, you could see forever, and smell the ocean, smell the flowers. So, a neat feeling. The making of the hat was, uh, was of course, very important in our culture. The man would wear them out at, at sea while they were um, paddling in their kayak. But this art um, has been lost or basically put in a closet, you know, in Smithsonian's um, museums all over the world. So nobody, you know, knew anything about it. The uh, generations grown up didn't know anything about it. So the late Andrew Grunholt decided, you know, I have this idle time and I'm going to learn it. And he basically recreated everything, all the forms and jigs that we have for the hats. Everything, you know, I accredit to him because we wouldn't have it. He came to Unalaska, started teaching um, at our school the first time in 1989, I believe, through the university as well as in the high school. And it was, uh, went over really well. The kids enjoyed it. So we, of course, we brought him back the next year and we br brought him back uh, five different times in Alaska. His first time that Andrew taught was up there in uh, Fairbanks at a uh, wood, woodworking wood shop. And so he did teach other people, uh, adults um, at that time. But, you know, just uh, um, having the hats back in our um, alley region is really important because the kids are really, you know, intrigued with it. And so am I because of course, we don't have trees in the Aleutians. So, you know, where did they get the wood? Now we go to the, you know, lumber supply companies and we get the wood. But before, you know, they had to go get driftwood and break it down. I have not tried using driftwood yet and splitting it to make a hat. I've, you know, thought about it, but that's about as, you know, close as I've ever come on that. Now teaching the school kids, you know, at culture camps and stuff, it, it's really funny. They, they kind of really appreciate, you know, same thing I did, what, you know, our people had to do, you know, with the old stone tools, what they would have to do to make the hats and whatnot. You know, nowadays they, they, they come to camp and they whittle out a hat and they're realizing like, wow, same thing I did though too. Wow, our people lived in a, a whole different world. You know, we lived in um, sod homes. You know, we had to carry water. We didn't have to go turn the faucet on. You know, so, it, it, you know, go light a fire to get warm. You know, now, you know, just things are just there. So they're, they're, I could see a lot of them, you know, respecting and, and, you know, proud of their culture too. 
why it was a lost art, we don't know. But to be, you know, a couple hundred years later, to have it revived, has been really a neat, you know, neat thing. That was a powerful, powerful feeling to be able to look, you know, at that visor or uh, chief's hat, to know it was made by, you know, one of my ancestors, you know, hundreds, a hundred years ago, maybe more. Um, and just to look at the worksmanship of it, the carving on the inside, we were able to look up on the inside of the hat to see how it was carved out, to see how the chin ties were, how the back brace was on there. And we also got to see um, close up. We were, you know, we were just inches away from it, we couldn't touch it, but you know, we could just see the worksmanship of the detailing, the fine painting, and then you know, it was just you know, so powerful, I get you know, goosebumps thinking of it, because it, 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 it inspires me, because you know, to know that they had to work with tools a lot different than what we have now. One thing that um, we noticed, and we couldn't, of course, the back brace, the um, ivory or the bone back brace covers it, all of the worksmanship, but we noticed that it was like a quarter inch thicker where the two pieces meet, and probably for strength, because when we pull the hat together to, to tie it, that was another neat thing. We got to measure the hats, and to measure the hats, a lot of them came out, the measurements were eight and a half, so we were thinking maybe it was the distance between a man's finger, because mine was only seven, so maybe a man's finger, the two side supports were eight and a half, and then even the center line was eight and a half, and the center line didn't go all the ways back. I had my center line, how Andrew taught me, to make that center line go all the ways back to the very back of the hat. But looking on the inside of that, it only went to um, eight and a half. And so now I've been, I'm chopping mine off because I looked at that you know, piece of art and was very amazed by it. And uh, another thing was, and we still didn't know this, Andrew didn't know it before he passed, is we groove ours to make it bend. They had a nice, <clears throat> excuse me, nice gradual groove and, and, it, it, and it's not no grooving like we did a V groove, and theirs was nice and rounded. And you could, we were able to use a flashlight to go up on the inside and look inside that hat and put it up to the light and to see if we could see through it, because that was one of our ways we checked the, the depth of it. If we were going too thin, you wanted to be able to see daylight on the other side. So we were able to do that, and we seen that, you know, Andrew mastered that as well. So it was really, really neat to have that to learn that knowledge. And again, just like the measurements, we're, we were really impressed with that. To get to study the real ones, I mean, I call them real ones, because you know those were how they were made. And um, Andrew tried, and he wasn't sure on the full crown. He said he wanted me to you know, get it finished to perfect it, and uh, I'm not a woods worker, so, you know, but I try. You know, I'm not gonna not try. You know, I'm gonna continue to study those, and, and I'm gonna you know, learn and work from the old ones. Everybody has taken a little bit of every uh, piece of something, you know, from everybody. With our two apprentices, you know, Tim and Dolores, they both have made hats before, and they both, you know, kind of have the concept, but they are learning a whole lot more too. And they are looking at each other and looking at us, and you know, looking for direction. And they are even giving us a few pointers. I think, you know, this program that we have here is really nice because. They're our future. They're young enough that they're going to be, you know, replacing me, you know, in a few years. So I think that's it's awesome. So this whole week it, it went by so fast, and and you know, just being able to do what we do, and the very important part of it is, you know, it's going to be documented, and other people are going to be able to see it and to learn more about it. And we're very lucky to be able to have done this, and totally appreciate it. So thank you.